Imagine a customer support agent that you don't need to hire, never needs training, is always accurate, never takes time off, and will bring down your average cost to solve a ticket. With VoiceFlow, you can stop imagining and start implementing. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to start solving Zendesk tickets using an AI agent that you've built out in VoiceFlow. I will show you exactly how to close the loop on sending a Zendesk ticket to VoiceFlow, processing it, and then sending it back to Zendesk. Hey, I'm Bart, and I'm a VoiceFlow community expert. You might remember me from my YouTube channel, Support Launchpad, or you may have seen my Zendesk Marketplace app, Zenflow, which lets you plug in your VoiceFlow agents directly into the Zendesk agent workspace. Using various VoiceFlow automation, I save my customer support team 40 hours of work per week, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm just about to send an email to a customer support team where I'm asking about open hours. Let's hit send, and in Zendesk, let's find that ticket. So let's refresh, there it is. Before we could open the ticket, we've already got an automated response. Hello Bar, we are open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thanks, support launchpad. Let's go back to Gmail. Here Here's that response. Our original email sent zero minutes ago and exactly zero minutes later, we had a response. Isn't that amazing? Let's start building out your very own VoiceFlow AI agent. First, let's look at the high level workflow we'll be building out. This is the workflow we're gonna be executing. Every time a new ticket comes into Zendesk, we're gonna fire off a trigger and that trigger will send a payload which contains the ticket ID across to Make. And then Make will send that payload across to VoiceFlow and our AI agent will process the request and solve the ticket. You might be asking, why don't we just go straight from Zendesk to VoiceFlow? If we look at the VoiceFlow Interact API, which is what we're gonna be using to initiate the conversation with our VoiceFlow AI agent, we first need to send a launch request. And after that, we send a text request. That text request is, is going to contain our ticket ID payload. Unfortunately, the Zendesk trigger doesn't have functionality to send two API calls. So we need to use make as the middleman because we can handle those API calls in a make scenario. Let's move across to VoiceFlow and start building out our assistant. We don't need any of this. So let's just delete it. The first thing that we want to do is capture that payload from make.com. And that payload contains our ticket ID. I'm going to say, this variable as ticket ID, create new variable. Now that we've captured the ticket ID, we can use Zendesk API to access all the details on that ticket. Looking at the Zendesk tickets API, we'll be using the show ticket endpoint, which is this URL. And you can see that we infuse our ticket ID into the URL. This will return a bunch of ticket properties, which include the ticket subject and the ticket description, which is the first comment from the customer. Since we're just working with brand new tickets that are created into our inbox, this is enough information for us. One thing to note is that this will not give us all all the comments on the ticket. If we want all the comments on a ticket, we'll have to use the list comments endpoint, which is here. We just infuse our ticket ID. This will return all messages from our customer, from our agent and internal notes. Back on the show ticket endpoint, let's scroll down and click on Node.js. This is how we'll be structuring our API call in VoiceFlow. We'll be making a get request because we're getting the information on the ticket. We'll use this URL. We have content type and authorization where our authorization is in this format and we have to base64 in code our API key. Let's start building out our Zendesk API call. Let's bring onto the canvas an API step, capture this UI, paste it into here. We're already using the get method. Let's replace this with our ticket ID variable. And let's replace example with our Zendesk subdomain. Next, let's build out our headers. Let's copy content type, paste it in. Let's copy application JSON, paste it in. Next, we'll do the authorization. Let's copy this, paste it in. Let's copy this template, paste it in for our value. Like I mentioned before, we'll be using our API token to authenticate the request. So we have to copy this template. And to remind us, we have to base64 encode our API token. You can Google search for a base64 encoder, which is what I've done here. Let's paste in that format. Replace email address with your email address. And now it's time for us to generate the API token. Inside Zendesk, let's go to Admin Center, search API, click Zendesk API. Make sure that your token access is enabled. Click Add API Token. Let's call this Zendesk and Make Integration. Copy your API token, click Save. Back in our Base64 encoder, paste in your API token. Hit Encode, copy this value and paste it here. Now we've set up our Zendesk API call. Let's give it a go. Hit Send Request. From Zendesk, let's choose a random ticket. Copy the ticket ID, paste it in, click generate. So this was a successful call. We can see that we have a ticket object returned with a bunch of ticket information, including the ID, the channel, the customer's email address, the customer's name, the ticket subject, the ticket description, which is that first comment from the customer, and a bunch of different information. Let's start saving some of that information into variables. Click capture response. The first thing we wanna get is the ticket subject. So we're gonna use response.ticket. Dot subject. Let's save this to ticket subject, create new variable. Next, let's capture the ticket description, response.ticket.description. Let's save this to ticket description, create variable. Next, let's get the ticket channel, response 
ticket dot via dot channel. Let's save this to ticket channel, create variable. Now let's get the customer's email address, response dot ticket dot via dot source dot from dot address. Let's save this to customer email, create variable, create variable. And finally, let's get the customer name, response dot ticket dot via dot source dot name. And let's save this to customer name, create variable. To show you how I captured some of these responses, let's generate another request. Over here, we have response.ticket.subject. First, we access the entire response of the API call. Then we plug into the ticket, which is here. And then we plug into the subject, which is here. You can think of this like accessing folders or subfolders. A more complicated one is response.ticket.via.source.from.address, which is the customer email. So over there, we go ticket.via dot source dot from dot address to get the email and then dot name to get the name. So now we've captured a bunch of information that we can use to process our request. The next part of this build is all about mitigating risk. We don't want to be generating incorrect responses and sending them to customers. I'm going to show you one way on how you can filter out tickets and isolate the ones that you know you have answers to. This is how we're going to be filtering out tickets. This big block represents all the tickets that you get, which we can then break down into key buckets where each bucket might have a different resolution. For example, general questions might have simple FAQ responses, order questions, you might need to use your Shopify API and returns might be a bit more sensitive. So we might want to route these directly to an agent. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can start filtering out your general questions and identifying your top 10 or 20 most common FAQs. The first thing we're going to filter out for is how many questions the user is asking. Let's get a set AI step, call this set number of questions. We'll use this prompt, which takes the ticket subject and the ticket description and outputs how many questions are being asked. We'll save this to number of questions, create variable, and we'll use the system settings. We're instructing our set AI step to output the number of one if the request is only about one question, and we output the number two if it's two plus questions. We'll then use a condition block, call the first condition one question, choose variable, use number of questions, set this to one, hit enter. For everything else, we're gonna use the else path. This flow will isolate requests that have one question. To build out this block, you might go back into your AI system settings and say output one if it's about one question, output two if it's about two questions, output three if it's about three questions, and you'll have different pathways where you will break down a request per question, isolate each question into a separate variable, get an answer to each question, and then use an AI step to answer that as a group. Since we're just starting off, we only wanna be dealing with requests that have one question. The next thing we wanna do is classify the intent of the ticket. Let's get a set AI step, call this classify the ticket. We'll use a similar prompt to before, but we're using the ticket subject and ticket description to classify the ticket. The reason that we're bringing in the ticket subject is, as you probably have experienced before, sometimes the customer puts the question into the subject and then in the description just says refer above. Let's save this to ticket intent create variable. Just like we spoke about, where we want to focus on general tickets and isolate our top 10 FAQs so we can build out flows specifically for them. Using the system instructions, we're going to build in our top 10 FAQs one by one. You can see here, output number one, if the customer is asking about open hours, output number two, if the customer is saying their computer isn't working, or output number three for everything else. To build this out, you would just say output number three for X, output number four for Y, and then you always want to have this fallback. So the final option is output number five, for example, for every other query. Let's use another condition block. Let's call this open hours, add a condition, add the variable. This is ticket intent. For open hours, our number is going to be one. Let's set this variable to one. Let's add another condition because we already have our next FAQ. Let's call this computer isn't working. Let's add a condition, add the variable, ticket intent, and computer isn't working is the output of two. So let's put two here. From here, we need to build out our answer flow for open hours and our answer flow for computer isn't working. We can put a no match, add a path as else, and just leave this blank. This means that for any other requests that are not about open hours or about the computer isn't working, we're just gonna end the flow here. I'm gonna show you two ways of building out the answer flow. For open hours, we're gonna use an AI step to generate a response. And then for computer isn't working, we're gonna send a canned response, kind of like sending a macro. Sending a macro is cheaper because we're not using AI tokens to generate the response. For open hours, let's use a set AI step. Let's call this open hours response. For our prompt, we're gonna feed in ticket subject and ticket description. Let's use the knowledge base. We're gonna ask for a response as if we're directly speaking to the customer. This is gonna be the most natural way we can insert a response into our email. And let's apply this to open hours response. Click create variable. Let's head across to our knowledge base and input some FAQ sources. Add data source, plain text. Import back on our canvas. 
Let's test this out. Preview question, what time do you open generate? We are open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The final thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna filter out by ticket channel. We're filtering out by ticket channel because a response that you generate for email will be different to a response that you generate for SMS. An email response will be a bit more formal, have a greeting, the email body, and then the agent signature, whereas an SMS might be short and snappy and have one or two sentences. To do that, let's introduce another condition step. Let's call condition one, if email, add a condition, hit the variable, choose ticket channel and input email, hit enter, add a no match, add a path. This way we're gonna be responding to open hours questions and only creating responses for email. Over here is where you would build out SMS channel or any other channel that you have. Our next step is to make the Zendesk API call to update a ticket. I'm gonna go back and copy our original Zendesk API call. Let's paste it here. Looking at the update ticket endpoint, we'll be making a pull request and use this URL. Again, we can feed in our ticket ID over here. This is the exact same URL that we have in our original API call, as you can see here. Let's drop down and change it to pull. Scrolling down a little bit, this is the body that we can send in our API call. Let's click on body, click on raw. Here's a body that I prepared earlier. Let's copy this, paste it into this online HTML viewer. You can see I have ticket, comment, and I'm using HTML body. Back in Zendesk documentation, we can either push through a HTML HTML body or a regular body. We're going to be using HTML body for our email channel so we can keep that nice formatting. Back in the HTML viewer, we're setting the comment as true. If we set this value to false, it'll be an internal note. And then we're setting our status to pending because we're starting off. We don't want to solve these tickets immediately. We want to leave them open for customers to message us if they need to, but we also want to set them to pending so they don't go into the open inbox and get seen by agents. Now let's break down how to edit the HTML body to be suitable for your own request. Let's get rid of all this and this. This is is the format of your email. Feel free to change this template to suit your needs. You can definitely shorten it and just include the response variable and get rid of all the other noise. But I found that including additional resources and being super clear about what other options the customer has to solve their ticket is extremely valuable in solving the request. Over here, I use the customer name variable and the open hours response variable that we generated using the set AI step. You can see that I'm using hyperlinks. This is the hyperlink tag. On W3 schools, see the hyperlink tag here and how to set it up. If you use these quotation marks, make sure you escape them with a forward slash. That means put a forward slash in front of the quotation mark. If you don't and you input this into your Zendesk API call, your API call will fail. Since we don't need any of these responses, let's just remove all this. Let's test this API call out. Click send request, enter the ticket ID of an existing ticket, enter a name, enter a response, click generate. This API call was successful. Back in Zendesk, we just sent a response to the ticket. This is the name that I passed through and this is our response. Let's connect this up. The final thing that we want to do is add tags to our ticket. We don't want to add tags in this first API call because if we add tags here, we'll simply override the existing tags on a ticket. Instead, we want to add new tags to the ticket without overriding existing tags. To add tags to the ticket, we'll be using this endpoint. Once again, you see we can do that by using the ticket ID. Let's duplicate this API call, grab this URL and paste it in. Make sure our ticket ID variable is here. And scrolling down, this is an example of the body that we can send. Here's one that I prepared earlier. I add a voice flow AI agent tag. This goes on to all all my AI agent tickets so I can pull a report and look at every single ticket that I respond to. I also add a more detailed tag, for example, question about open hours. Let's test this out. Hit send request, click generate. This call was successful. Back in Zendesk, we can see the tags have been added to the ticket. Let's join this up. And now let's generate a response for computer isn't working. Since we're using a canned response and we don't need an AI step, the first thing we wanna do is filter out for email only. Let's get a condition block. Type in if email, add a condition variable ticket channel, add email, click no match, and add a pathway for else. As you can see, these two blocks are the same and things are gonna become really messy down the line as we build out our requests. So I'm gonna consolidate these blocks a little bit earlier in our flow. To do that, let's delete this block. Let's unplug this block. And let's move this block a little bit earlier in our flow. I'm gonna place it right after our first API call. Let's make some space, unplug this, place in our email filter, connect it up. And now all of the responses that we generate here will be for email only. Let's plug this into our API call. Now we can duplicate these API blocks and plug our response directly in. We need to edit the body of our request. Here's one that I prepared earlier. Let's copy it, paste it into our online HTML viewer and look at the response. We pull in customer name and then our static response. Please turn your computer off and then on again. The next thing we wanna do is edit our tags. Let's change this to computer isn't working. As you can see, I'm not using any spaces between the words. I'm just using underscores to represent spaces. Make sure you follow the same formatting as this because Zendesk doesn't use spaces in their tags. 
So now we've just built out response flows for our top two FAQs for the email channel. You would go back and add new channels and iterate this process to add more responses. For now, let's demo how this looks. Let's hit run, run test. For this test, I'm gonna use this ticker that's asking about the open hours. Let's get this ticket ID, paste it in here and hit run. Awesome, the flow was successful and both of our API calls triggered. Back in Zendesk, we have the reply generated, including our customer name and then our AI generated response. And here we have our tags, voice flow AI agent and question about open hours. Now that we've built out some successful responses in our voice flow AI agent, we're gonna be focusing on creating a connection between Zendesk and Make so that we can send that payload to voice flow. In Zendesk, let's go to admin center. Let's search webhook, click webhook, create webhook, click trigger or automation, click next. Let's call this Zendesk and Make integration. For the endpoint URL, we have to target this into a make.com scenario. In make.com, go to the scenarios tab, click create new scenario. The first thing we want is an inbound webhook. Click custom webhook, click add. Let's call this Zendesk and Make integration. Click save. This is the webhook address. Let's copy it to clipboard. Back in Zendesk, let's paste it here. We'll be using a post method. Request format is JSON. Let's test this webhook. Back in make, let's click OK and let's click run once. Now we can test our webhook in Zendesk hit send test. This was successful. Back in make, we can see that we received a bundle from Zendesk with the subject, help my printer is on fire, which matches up to this payload here. This means that the webhook connection is successful. Create webhook. The next thing we need to do is create a trigger that's gonna fire off our webhook. So for now, let's just finish setup. Click leave without connecting. Search trigger. Click on triggers. Click on create trigger. It's called this Zendesk and make integration. Our first condition is gonna to be to fire off on all new tickets. Scroll down, add an action. We want this to notify by an active web. Click on Zendesk and make integration. For the JSON body, we wanna send the payload of our ticket ID. So we'll be sending this. Let's click add action. We want to add tags to this ticket. We'll be adding VF underscore sent to every ticket that receives this action. Scrolling up, let's add another condition. We wanna make sure we're dealing with tickets that do not have the VF sent tag. This is best practice so we can close the loop after sending the initial trigger. If you wanted your AI agent to respond to every new comment from a customer and not just brand new tickets, you would change this condition to reflect that. Let's scroll to the bottom and click create. Now that we created that webhook, we wanna duplicate it so that we can send a manual request from a ticket and then we can prime make.com with the updated payload. Click clone, remove this condition, add a new condition. With this new condition, we can go into a Zendesk ticket and manually fire off this trigger so that we can update the payload in make.com. Let's create this. Back in Zendesk, let's add that VF send tag. Back in make, let's run the scenario once. Back in Zendesk, let's submit this ticket and back in make, our trigger fired off the updated payload, which is here ticket ID 55. We can now access this variable in our next API calls that go off to voice flow. So to remind us, first we have to send a launch request and then we can send a text request, which will contain our ticket ID payload. Let's click node. These are the API settings that we need to use. Our URL, it'll be post method, our headers, and then our body back and make. Let's make a HTTP request. Let's copy this URL, paste it here. Let's replace this with our ticket ID variable. It will be a post request. Let's add our authorization header, authorization. This is where we put our VoiceFlow API key. Back in VoiceFlow, let's hit integration, API keys, copy API key, paste it here. For body type, let's choose raw. For content type, application JSON. Here is a body that I prepared earlier. Let's click OK. We've just created our launch request. Now let's create our text request. Make another HTTP call. Copy across this URL method to post, add our authorization header. For body type raw, content type, application JSON. Here's a body that I prepared earlier, including our payload as the ticket ID. Click OK, let's turn our scenario on. Let's make sure to publish our agent and just give it a random test run. Now it's ready to go. Now that we've built out the Zendesk and Make connection and plugged it into VoiceFlow, let's give it a go on a live email ticket. Here's a sample email where I'm sending to my customer support team and I'm asking about open hours. Let's hit send. Back in Zendesk, let's find that ticket. Hit refresh. There it is. Open hours. Hi guys, what time do you open? And there you go. Right before our eyes, the ticket was updated. Hello Bart, I noticed that you're asking about open hours. We are open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And here is the live update to my email in Gmail. We are open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And there you have it. Now you can take this template and build out your very own AI agent in VoiceFlow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you showing off your work in a VoiceFlow Discord. Don't forget to check out Zenflow in the Zendesk app marketplace. See ya.